Another important aspect in alpha beta algorithm is the move ordering. It does matter as it actually affects the effectiveness of alpha and beta. For example, if remember in this example, we started with um, uh, when we were exploring this node here, we sent as alpha 3 and we sent beta of plus infinity. So when uh, the node D, this is a mean, is exploring the children, it's, it started with 14. So which led, led that mean, uh, update the, the beta to 14. And afterwards, it explored 5. It updated the beta to 5. And at the end, it explored 2. So it updated the beta to 2. So you could imagine that if we had uh, 14 and 15 after 2, we could have simply avoided exploring 14 and 15. In this case, we could have started with um, the value of, um, if we had, uh, so we had plus infinity. If we saw 2 first, we could have uh, obtained, uh, you know, changed beta to 2. And then since alpha is bigger or equal than 2, then we could have uh, dropped these two nodes if they were, assuming they were actually on the other side of the, of the number of the children of uh, the, the node D. So we could not prune any successor of D because the worst successors were actually of mean were actually generated first. If the third one, again, the leaf 2, was actually generated first, we would have pruned the two others, 14 and 5, earlier. So the idea of ordering is to examine the first successors that are likely best and explore those first. Chances are that you are going to get the best first, and then you are going to prune a large space in the tree. The worst ordering for alpha-beta pruning is when no pruning can happen at all. This happens when the best moves are simply on the right side of the game tree, which means that we have to go through this, explore this, the, be the bad moves first before reaching the best moves on the right. The complexity of the alpha-beta pruning in this case is similar to minimax, which is a big O of b to the m. The ideal ordering for, for alpha-beta pruning is when a lot of pruning happens and the best moves are actually on the left of the game tree. So, so remember, it's a DFS search, which means that we're going to get the best moves first, which means that when we go to the right-hand side of the game tree, it's going to be the worst moves, and we are not going to explore them because we have better alphas and betas. So in this case, um, this solves uh, the tree twice as deep as minimax in the same amount of time. And we know that when we go deeper, we are going to have a better chance to play better. So the complexity in this case is, um, in practice, an O of B to the M divided by 2. The search can go deeper, which is great. So the question is how to find a good ordering. There are different strategies to do that. So first of all, we can remember the best moves from the shallowest nodes. Uh, so it means that the actions can you know, be just uh, reproduced based on what we have observed in the shallowest nodes. We can order the nodes as, so as the best are checked first. Uh, we could use some domain knowledge. Example, for chess, we could try the order captures, then captures first, then threats, then uh, forward moves, then backward moves, etc. So this gives us like a sequence of actions. We could prioritize those. And finally, we could bookkeep the states because many of them may repeat, and we don't necessarily need to recalculate the whole whole subtrees if we have them already in memory. So if we bookkeep and we do uh, use some domain knowledge to explore the actions in some order, we can uh, maybe um, provide a good ordering and have a, uh, an interesting pruning happening in the tree and hence go deeper into the game tree while we are searching. So minimax, alpha, beta pruning, and move ordering help us do a better exploration of the search space. However, minimax still needs to generate the entire game search space to search in it. Alpha, beta algorithm, uh, in the best case scenario, reach the double the depth of minimax, but still needs to go all the way down to the leaves, which is actually impractical in real time games in which we have to move in a reasonable amount of time. The solution to that would be to bound the depth of the search by doing a cutoff search, as suggested by Shannon in 1949, in which we are going to replace uh, the uh, utility function s with an eval function that actually is an evaluation function or heuristic to estimate the value of the current board configuration. So in this case, the, uh, the, the idea of Shannon is to say that given a search space, instead of going all the way till uh, the, the leaves to find the true utility of the terminal state, let's stop earlier and have an estimation of the value of the board at that node here. So this is uh, what actually helped solve many games, uh, complex games such as chess and Go, is to stop earlier, uh, try to go as deep as we can, but still st stop earlier in the search space. 
A value of s at, uh, for some state s is actually a heuristic function that could be used based on domain knowledge. For example, for Othello, we could take the difference between the white pieces and the black pieces. For chess, we could take the difference between the value of the white pieces versus the value of the black pieces, which will, take, uh, which will actually turn non-terminal notes into terminal leaves, which is great. So we, we can stop the search earlier rather than going into all the way down into a depth of 100. An ideal evaluation function would rank actually the terminal state in the same way as the true utility function, uh, but it must be fast. That's why we are using actually these evaluation functions. It's typical to define those features and make a function that actually is a linear weighted sum of the features and use domain knowledge to craft the best possible features for the domain. So how does it work? So uh, for chess, for example, select first some useful features. So let's call them f1, f2, fn. For example, for chess, we could take the number of pieces on the board. Uh, fe feature two could be, for example, the values of one uh, piece, like pound, one for pound, three for bishop, etc. So we could devise, using the main knowledge and our e long-term experience using uh, playing chess, all kinds of features that, could, that we could put together using a weighted linear function. So if out of s would be the sum of the w i f i of s, which means that we're going to put a weight to each of those features and have the evaluation function at the state s being the weighted sum of those features. So I'm going to be able to learn the weight using machine learning. Uh, this is what we're going to see in the next lectures. So we're going to have a set of examples to learn from, the previous matches, for example. And we can, using these functions, devise the weights, learn the weights that can actually give us the best evaluation function for chess. So uh, just as an example, Deep Blue has used over 6,000 features to, as um, a function that were combined together to evaluate uh, the game and stop earlier in the search tree.